What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be trying out something I haven't done on this channel before, and that is going to be a locomotive restoration. Um, the locomotive uh, we're going to be restoring today is this Montua 040 shifter in the Rio Grande. It's number 99. Um, this is the one, one of the ones from the 50s where it has a complete uh, die cast uh, locomotive shell, and it had a smoke unit in it. I took this the smoke unit smoke unit out of it just because I'm not a fan of smoke unit on DC locomotives. But basically, the problem of this locomotive is the it's running pretty inefficient and the wheels are very dirty. So as you can see, if I turn the power up, we're at about a little over a quarter, and the locomotive is just humming. About fifty percent. I think it's just the dirty wheels. As you can see, it's moving very slowly and it's grinding and we're about 50% throttle and it stopped. If you turn it all the way up, it goes, but this motor is definitely on its last legs. So what I'm going to be doing today is I got this locomotive at a train show recently. And this is a later version, but it is an 040 Montua shifter. I already took the motor out of it. Uh, here it is right here. Um, some parts I'm also going to be putting onto this shifter are these little uh, side rod pieces. Um, they've just gone missing off of mine. I, I don't even know where they went, honestly. But uh, I just this is a locomotive I'm, I really, really like, so it's, it's going to be getting a new motor. So uh, sit back and enjoy me restoring this locomotive. All right, guys, so the first thing I'm going to need to do this locomotive is obviously disassemble it. So I'm going to set you guys down here, and let me get to work on that. So the way I acquired this Montua shifter is just on eBay. And this is sort of when I was getting into DC locomotives a lot. Um, I just remember seeing this on eBay and I remember it being a pretty good deal for at the time. It was, I think probably about $20 and the uh, original owner didn't know, or the seller didn't really know if it worked. So I'm, I think it was just a bid and nobody else was deciding to bid on it. So I just grabbed it. The, end of the bid. So we're going to pull out this front screw. And I need to be careful to keep them separate from this shifter's screws. And all these screws and parts uh, belong to the new shifter that's going to be donating its motor. So I'm just going to be disassembling that. That should come out. Just being a little stubborn here. Oh, there we go. And from there, the whole shell comes off. Um, this is a very nice example, I may add, of the Montua shifter. A lot of parts there that you just don't see on a lot of these uh, old shifters from the 50s. This thing is completely die cast. So there's no plastic on it, really, on the, on the chassis. All right, so this is what we were working with on the inside. And honestly, I have no clue how the new motor is going to go in. I, un I understand there is a motor screw that goes through the bottom right here. Um, as you can see, we are working in. Yeah, this is the same motor. They're commutated on this one. It's very worn out. Yeah, it's lost a lot of the compression that this one has. Um, this one's a little squeaky. Just a little bit. Um, so we're going to want to oil that up, I think. But it looks like uh, it's just going to be this wire that's soldered to the front of the motor. Um, I'm only seeing one wire that goes to the tender for the pickups, so I, I guess the next step would just be uh, soldering this new, or desoldering this motor, obviously taking it out, and soldering this one in. So we're going to get started on taking apart, or taking out this motor. Oh yeah, here comes the, the valve gear, it comes out with the, with the uh, top of the locomotive. There it goes. Right. And the screw right here. Um, okay, so um, this is the old motor. I'm trying to figure out if I want it, which worm gear I want to use. Um, I think it would be easier just to use the whole new assembly and just 
plop it in. I'm trying to make sure that they're okay. So I'm I'm noticing a few differences, just very minor things here. Uh, sorry if it's gotten a little out of frame, but uh, I'm I've been noticing some small differences, but um. I think we're good. So on the next clip, I'm just going to be soldering, desoldering this motor and soldering this motor on. All right, guys, so we're over here at the soldering station. And the one thing that occurred to me of doing is actually just removing um, the tender from the locomotive. So we're going to be doing that as the soldering iron warms up. Um, I'm not anticipating that this will be a very hard... Um, soldering job, but I guess we'll see. Oh, that screw. Oh, this is a little short. Uh, I thought it snapped a little bit, but it looks like we're good. So just set the tender aside and uh, it looks like we're up to temperature. So let's try and figure out what we're doing here. Well, basically it just looks like we're going to be just taking that little ball of solder off and soldering to the new motor. So we'll just grab our soldering iron here. Uh, set the side, set that up. And we're just gonna... There you go. Very easy. And I guess this is our scrap motor. I'm gonna make sure to set that aside so we don't get them confused. Um, so I guess that was just soldered to a little knot there. Sorry for the noise, it's the furnace. Um, I'll try and increase the audio if it's just unbearable, but I think it should be fine. So the thing, we're gonna wanna do this wire, we're gonna tin it a little bit. So I'm gonna grab the solder. And it's a little hard to do this because I don't have this sort of set up. Uh, I guess we'll just, uh, I actually have a little wire holder right here, very handy. All right, so let's we'll grab the soldering iron. We'll solder on this first. And this wire is not accepting the tinning very easily. You know, there's a little ball of solder on there. I think that should be good enough. Set that aside. Get a little ball of solder on here going. And I know this could be very easy with flux, and we might have to go to the flux, but I just wanted to make this sort of a quick process. There we go. So we have a ball of solder there. We'll take this out of the holder, and we're just gonna mate these two together. Um, probably going to do it facing the way it's gonna be sitting. Um, no, okay. So we're just gonna solder this guy on right here. Heat this ball up a little bit, put that up, and just fuse them together. Just like that. Um, oh, okay. Well, it fell out, so I guess we're gonna re just redo that. See, no, it's not taking. This is not a very sticky surface for the solder. So I'm gonna grab a flux pen real quick. And that should just be over here. Uh, we don't have any of the good, uh, the good flux right now. That was a lot of flux. All right, let's try this again. That definitely felt like it held. That wire, as you guys can see, is on there. It is a pretty ugly soldering job. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Um, I'm thinking we just try this and I might fix it. I mean, it might need some fixing later on if this wire gets ganked, but I think that's um, gonna be good for the soldering. So uh, we're gonna head back over to the table and install this and see if it works. All right, guys, we're back at the layout. Um, so I've got the new motor that is the wire solder to it. I have the chassis right here. Um, and we're just gonna be seeing if that works. So uh, first thing we're gonna wanna do is probably attach this back on. I don't exactly remember which way it went on. There should, 
should only go on a few ways, but for just to make sure, we'll try and put it on the way I think it went on first. If not, it's <laughs> there's only one other way really. Uh, just making careful because these little these little uh, copper or you know, brass or whatever pieces can pop off super super easily on these old Montua locomotives. I I don't know why. It's probably just because they're old. Um, but when I was messing around with the other one, just checking it out, basically, it it fell off. It probably would have just fallen off uh, with me using the locomotive. I, mean, I can't get this on for the life of me. Jeez. Um, there we go. Screw is on. And this way makes sense. Um, I'm not sure if this... Uh, Locomotive needs uh, the driver. It shouldn't need the driver wheels. Yeah, it doesn't make electrical contact. Maybe there's a ground in it? I'm not sure. Okay, we're gonna try it on the layout. Um, just set that to the side, I guess. Um, nothing. I'm not sure why. Hmm, okay, interesting. I wonder, I wonder if that is in backwards. That might be the case. Okay, so we're gonna try and reverse the way this wire went in. We're gonna put the wire, let's see, I guess the other way around, I'm not quite sure. Okay, um, let's just try that again. I doubt that will solve our problem. Yeah, no, nothing there. Uh, I'm gonna try and install it into the locomotive because I have a suspicion there might be some sort of ground uh, in the locomotive. So we're just gonna slide this guy in like so. Um, grab this really small screw. Uh, for the motor. Uh, grab the flathead. Screw this guy in. Uh, we're not really wind up here. Let's try and line that up better. Alright guys, so I got that motor screw in. I actually needed to grab one from the parts locomotive. Not sure why I couldn't get that one in. It might have gotten a little messed up when I took it out. Um, as far as I know, this motor had never been out of this locomotive, so it might have taken a few of the threads off it. So this is the moment of truth, guys. Did this job hold up? Let's see. Oh, there we go. Motor's definitely turning over. It's running, I gotta tell you guys, a lot, a lot better than the old locomotive did. So, um, I'm just gonna throw the jar, or the jaw bar on. Hopefully none of this stuff desolders. Um, all right, okay. So throw this on. This screw out. And something to keep in mind when you're working on these old, just old locomotives in general, old stuff in general, guys, is you're gonna really want to be careful to sort of keep uh, all the screws. Like you just want to be nice to all the screws, honestly, because. This stuff can break super easily. I've had a bunch of stuff sort of just break off in um, inside of, you know, just, I've just had stuff break and it's just been some of the worst uh, breakages. Just having some like leftover threads or part of a screw inside of some places you just really don't want. Uh, so definitely, definitely be careful of that. I think I was using the wrong screw for that, guys. I might've been trying to put the uh, tender screw in with, or I might be, might have been trying to use the tender screw on the motor, so that was probably why that wasn't working. And this is gonna be a little bit tricky getting this back in, guys. You definitely have to get the right angle. Okay, we're back in. Try to get this settled. I don't know if this is the right way to put this back on. Uh, 
talking about the order draw bar and wire but obviously a trial and error that's okay this may this way makes sense to me um I'm hoping it doesn't break anything okay let's try that out hopefully we got the right order if not too bad we'll try it again all right we're on the rails power's on yep that is the correct orientation guys so we've done we've switched over the motors which is some some pretty nice success. I'm just gonna grab a little, actually I'll oil it afterwards. Um, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna put the pistons back, or the valve gear things back on. And I'm not sure how to put those new slidey, these little slidey bits um, from the donor locomotive on with that. So all right, for now guys, I'm just gonna run it without um, the extra little metal pieces in. No big deal, just the way I've been running this locomotive for a while, apparently. I don't even know where those went. Like I said, they sort of just wandered off one day, and that's sort of how that went. All right, so now that these side rods are back in, everything sort of buttons down, we can grab the top of the locomotive. I'm not quite sure how this wiring goes in. I think just probably over the top. Hopefully I'm not squishing it. Um, yeah, it comes out of the tender, or it comes out through the cab into the tender. Um, yeah, okay. So we have that back on. We're gonna grab this screw that goes through the front valve gear into, the, I guess, the, the shell of the loco. All right, guys. So now that's screwed on, the locomotive is back together. Oh, huh, the drawbar screw fell through. Okay, maybe it was the smaller one. It has a, a bigger head to the screw, but for now that's that's fine just running around like that. So here is the locomotive back together. We're gonna switch it on. We're in forward, we're gonna apply a little power. Get a little nudge to get it going. There we go, guys. Definitely, definitely, definitely it needs a little bit of lubrication. But I can tell you guys, it's running much more efficient than before. Yeah. Very smooth at low speeds. Uh, running much more efficient. So I would call this a definite success, guys. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing with this locomotive yet. Um, I'm going to be adding, adding the little side rods. Uh, back on fixing the draw bar, but and giving it a little grease obviously it's a little noisy But for now guys that is a definite success in my book um, like subscribe um, Maybe put down in the comments what you guys would like to see me restore or just from this channel So thank you for watching. Have a great day